welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, I've actually got a visitor with me today. Uh, she's decided that she wants to audit my On This Day in Tudor History uh, videos and just check that I'm doing them properly. So you can see that she's uh, really doing that, you know, intent on concentrating here. Now, where am I taking you to today? Well, I'm taking you to the reign of King Henry VIII. But on this day in Tudor history, the 30th of April, 1544, Thomas Audley, Baron Audley of Walden and Lord Chancellor died at his home, the former Christchurch Priory in Oldgate, London, at the age of about 56. Audley had been Cromwell's right-hand man in 1536 during the fall of Anne Boleyn, and he became even more important after the fall of Thomas Cromwell. I give a brief bio of Audley in my book, The Fall of Anne Boleyn, A Countdown, so this talk is based on that. So let me tell you a bit more about him. Thomas Audley was born in around 1487-1488 in Earlscombe in Essex. He was the son of Geoffrey Audley, an administrator. After being educated at Buckingham College, Cambridge, Audley was admitted to the Inner Temple, one of the four inns of the court in London. And in 1514, he served as town clerk of Colchester in Essex, and in 1520, as a justice of the peace for Essex. Audley came to the attention of King Henry VIII in 1523 after taking Cardinal Wolsey's side in Parliament when Sir Thomas More defended the rights of the common people. He rose quickly from that point and on the 20th of May 1532 he was knighted and made Keeper of the Great Seal after Sir Thomas More resigned as Lord Chancellor. On the 26th of January 1553 he was officially named as Lord Chancellor. Audley is thought to have been responsible for smoothing the passage through Parliament of legislation regarding the King's break with Rome and the supremacy. On the 24th of April 1536, he was responsible for setting up the legal machinery which was used in the fall of Anne Boleyn. Two legal commissions, one for the county of Middlesex and one for Kent. The job of this type of commission, Oya and Termina, was to investigate alleged serious crimes such as treason and to determine if there was indeed a case. In 1536, the grand juries of Kent and Middlesex ruled that there was sufficient evidence to send Queen Anne Boleyn, Lord Rochford, Sir Henry Norris, Sir Francis Weston, William Brereton and Mark Smeaton to trial for high treason. Of course, they ended up being found guilty and were executed. On the 17th of May 1536, Audley was present at Lambeth when Thomas Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury, declared that the marriage between Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn was null and void. And on the 19th of May, he attended the Queen's execution at the Tower of London. On the 29th of November 1538, Thomas Audley was made Baron Audley of Walden and was elected as Knight of the Garter in April 1540. The 1539 Parliament's Act of Precedence gave him precedence over all but Dukes of Royal Blood in Parliament, Privy Council and Star Chamber. Although he played a role in negotiating the King's marriage to his fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, Audley survived the fall of Thomas Cromwell and was involved in negotiating the annulment of the Cleves marriage and, later, in interrogating Catherine Howard, Henry VIII's fifth wife. Audley was the Privy Council's expert on treason and he was also a commissioner at the trials of Thomas Culpepper and Francis Derham and was Lord High Steward at the trials of Henry Pole, Baron Montague and Henry Courtney, Marquess of Exeter, in 1538. In 1541, he performed the same role at the trial of Thomas Fine's 9th Baron Dacre. In April 1542, he re-established his former Cambridge College, Buckingham College, as Magdalen College. And on the 21st of April 1544, he resigned the Great Seal due to illness, and he died on the 30th of April 1544 at his home. He was buried at Saffron Walden in Essex. 
Thomas Audley was married twice, first to Christina Barnardiston, who didn't give him any children, and then to Lady Elizabeth Grey, daughter of Thomas Grey, second Marquess of Dorset, who gave him two daughters, Mary and Margaret. Margaret married Henry Dudley and then Thomas Howard, fourth Duke of Norfolk. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 30th of April 1532, lawyer James Bainham was burnt at the stake at Smithfield for his reformed faith. And you can find out more about him in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to in the description. And in 1536, in the lead up to Queen Anne Boleyn's execution, court musician Mark Smeaton was arrested and taken to the home of Thomas Cromwell. And a theologian witnessed an argument between King Henry VIII and Queen Anne Boleyn. You can find out more in my video for the 30th of April, 1536, which I'll give you a link to. Now, I don't know whether uh, Teasel's audit has been a successful one or not. She doesn't actually seem to be paying much attention to what I'm saying. Oh well. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me or us a like and leave a comment. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye.